Amsterdam season three, episode one. Let's go. Shout out to everyone who's gotten their vaccine. Hashtag this is our shot is an amazing campaign of our healthcare workers showing themselves getting their shots. Talk about leading by example. And I hope that everyone talks to their primary care doctors or other health professionals about getting their vaccines. Linking my videos on vaccines down below. I did one with Mama Dr. Jones in case you are pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant as well. I just wanted to tell everyone how proud I am of this whole hospital. I don't know how I feel about this beard on him. I, I think I liked him without the beard. You know, actually him and I, before the pandemic, walked in a blue jacket fashion show to raise money for prostate cancer. He's quite the model. I am committed to fixing the cracks around here, okay? The system abandoned us when we needed it most. And I, I vow, uh, I vow to fix the system that left us overburdened. Since when do hospitalists have a conversation about something very important like hospital funding in hallways around patients? There's conference rooms for a reason. Okay. Is this a Sully moment? U.S. Airways Flight 1549 landing on the freezing cold Hudson River, all because of heroic Captain Sully and his fabulous crew. Whoa, this is a Sully moment. Ooh. That looked like a fairly smooth landing. I mean, outside of some bumps and bruises and depending on how cold it is, some hypothermia, I think everyone should be pretty safe on board. <laughs> but obviously, because it's a medical trauma, that's not gonna be the case. Ma'am, we're gonna take good care of you, okay? Let's get a trauma one. Hey, I need an EKG, a portable chest, and full blood panel, including coax. Oh Ordering blood tests in a situation like this is important, but the first thing you wanna do is get big, large bore IVs into both arms to give fluids and blood in case the person's bleeding out. That kind of access is the most important thing to someone's survival. Obviously, airway and breathing as well, but I already saw that she is, in fact, airway clear and breathing. Neck veins suspended with muffled heart sound. Tamponade from blunt force trauma. That means she's actually bleeding in an enclosed space into the lung cavity, into the cardiac cavity. And as a result, if you have so much fluid around the heart, it can't expand fully. Because when a heart beats, it doesn't just contract. It actually has to relax. And if it doesn't have room to relax and expand, it actually doesn't get enough blood flow to itself because it's a muscle. It needs its own level of circulation. Co-pilot with deep abdominal blood lack and blood loss. Heart rate up to 118, BP down to 108. So with a patient who is bleeding from the abdomen has a laceration to the abdomen, a low blood pressure with a high pulse can mean that that person's bleeding out, losing blood. Because what's essentially happening is you're losing pressure in this closed arterial and venous system, in the circulatory system, and your heart is trying to compensate by increasing the heart rate to try and get more blood flow to the areas that aren't getting enough oxygenation. It's a comp compensatory mechanism there. We'll do our best to stay out of your way. We just need to interview every crew member and passenger who may have pertinent information. Well, roger that. Or, uh, sorry, uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with patient care, I will help in any way I can. Understood. We want to start with the pilots. Captain Starks? I'll find him for you. Why are they going to the director of the hospital for this? Like, if they just walked in, went to the head triage person in the emergency room, they can get all this information. They are law enforcement, technically. They don't need to go to the chairperson of the hospital. It's your job to investigate, and it's our job to heal. So once we're done... Dr. Goodwin, to clarify, you're blocking access to a key witness. I'm pretty sure if you come with a federal subpoena or like a, a judge's order, you can get the hospital to order some blood tests. But I think a patient has the right to refuse unless it's like one of these like very specific orders by the court. And I think as a pilot, you sort of give up that right and allow them to test your blood. I could be wrong here though. Pilots, weigh in. You smell that? Someone chewing gum? Mints, candy, anything? Saturations are down. It's the co-pilot. It smells like ethylene glycol. Antifreeze. When the plane crashed, maybe a hose snapped her open abdominal wound. Absorbed it, which is why we can't get the blood it's to clot. It's a clot. Push for mipazole. It should act as an antidote. That's a very advanced situation. That a part of the antifreeze of the plane stabbed them in the stomach and is now pouring that poison into his stomach. Jesus, what a story. Oh, well, he must have been stabbed with tubing that had ethanol, ethylene glycol from the airplane and then it pumped into his stomach and then hurt his bile duct because the liver enzymes were slightly inflamed. Like, oh, never happening in reality. Liver enzymes are elevated. How high? 
three and a half times normal. That's so mild. The liver enzymes being elevated three and a half times normal is not great, but it could be just shock because it's not getting enough circulation. That's a good time to mention some stuff about liver enzymes. They're called oftentimes LFTs, which is liver function tests, but the reality is they do not represent whether or not your liver is functioning well. They're actually signs of liver inflammation, that if you have damage to the liver, you actually leak these enzymes, and as a result, if they're elevated, your liver function tests are saying that there's damage to your liver. Now what? BP falling, Tim's dropping. She's septic. Start her on amp, gentin, flagell, hang a bag of dopamine at two mics a minute. How do they not start that already? The patient is open wound from a, a trauma. Like you should have started them on antibiotics broad spectrum. Enzymes are six times normal. Liver's not gonna last much longer. I need to expose the entire organ. You'd need to extend the surgical field across the whole abdomen. Laparotomy. Scalpel. Do you wanna call in gastro? No, there's no time. You mind getting your hands dirty? Of course not, but uh, it, it's been a few years. You have a steady hand? Well, yes. Clear field of vision? Yes. Still like that Thai food place on 17th? Yes. Then what are you waiting for? Last I remember, she was an oncologist. Am I wrong? She, yeah, she is an oncologist. Why is she operating? Why is the oncologist operating? We've got a problem with Shanaz. Dissecting aortic aneurysm. Couldn't see it till I drained out the fluid. That's a problem. So basically an aneurysm is a ballooning of the main artery uh, that's usually coming off of the aorta, which is the main artery that comes off of the heart. If you have this ballooning, meaning there's a weakness in the wall, and a dissecting aortic aneurysm means that there's a tear inside this wall. These ballooning sections of the arteries, these aneurysms, are more likely to tear because there's less tissue there, it's thinner. What does that mean, Dr. Walsh? The aorta could rupture. Well, uh, if it tears, it's basically rupturing. <laughs> a lot of times the classic sign is a patient comes in either with very bad chest pain or very bad back pain. And sometimes these uh, dissecting aortic aneurysms are missed because sometimes doctors unfortunately misdiagnose it as like back pain or some kind of sciatic type pain. When the reality is they need to rule out this dissecting aortic aneurysm, which can be done with an X-ray, an EKG, or a cheetah scan, an ultrasound. What are you doing? We're not sending another patient off into the great unknown when I can help them right here, right now. We just page cardio. She's not your patient They're anymore. They're all my patients. How is she gonna perform a repair, an aortic aneurysm repair in the, I don't understand. Advancing catheter. Okay, I'm at the aorta. Is she really performing some kind of aortic repair as an ER physician? I don't know, like I've never heard of this or seen this. Someone please tell me if this is, I'm wrong here. I, I don't think this is appropriate. BP's dropping. Dissection's extending. Drainage greater than 200. What the hell are you doing? Trying to stop the dissection. No, you didn't, you made it worse. And trying to fix it? Not fast enough. Thanks to you going rogue, I gotta crack her chest here. The way that they were trying to repair it was putting in a catheter going through the blood vessel to go from the interior portion and attack that problem, the tear from the inside of the artery. With that failing, now they have to go out from the outside and open the chest, which means a longer recovery time, higher risk, et cetera, et cetera. Ma'am, we are authorized to speak to any individual who may have inflammation. Hey, whoa, 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 enough. You don't have the right to come into this hospital and rip a patient away from their doctor, violating HIPAA rules. As a matter of fact, we do. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. What is this? A federal order. I'm kind of proud of myself, and I think Legal Eagle would be proud too, that I said a federal judge has to order this, and he said it's a federal order. Smart. Smart. So I'll ask one more time. Where's the pilot? Now you could be in trouble for obstructing justice. All right, so uh, on takeoff, if a pilot discovers that his airspeed indicator is giving him an inaccurate reading, and he is flying too slow, what would that pilot do? Why is the hospital staff doing this investigation? Get the nose down, you, you'd go into the dive in order to gain speed, and then you'd, you'd, you'd lift up at the very end. Which is exactly what you did, <laughs> right? You think that Captain Starks jeopardized the lives of 150 people. We think he saved the lives of 150 people. Oh yeah, with this information that you just got five seconds ago? I've ranked all the medical dramas that I've watched, including New Amsterdam. See where it falls on my list by clicking here. And as always, stay happy and healthy.